economic crisis. I know that a lot of schools are facing uh, bigger money situations, and so video conferencing is really a very cost-effective way to take field trips to places all around the world. And field trips are really an important part of uh, school life because kids need to get out there and see the larger world. And with video conferencing, you're able to do that without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on plane tickets and calling up the police to find the child who wandered <laughs> off, which I'm sure a lot of kids would do. And so video conferencing lets you really travel without all the hassle. Instead of just reading from a website or showing a video, you can speak to content experts or collaborate with classrooms around the world. Video conferencing offers a variety of learning formats, so the sky is really the limit. Uh, for instance, content creation in the classroom, student collaboration, accessing content providers in distance classes. And I'd like to thank Jan Zanis. Your book was such a wonderful resource. <laughs> He's making this presentation interactive video conferencing. Uh, so here actually is an example from that book. And this is an example of accessing another classroom in the United Kingdom from the United States. So you're really able to reach out to other countries. And this is a writer's workshop. And you can see that that is an example of uh, over here on the pyramid, there are the different types of accessing content providers, distance classes, etc. So you really have lots of different categories in your video conferencing classes that you can access. Awesome insects. Squash, oh, scram, squash, or study. I'm thinking study, but I know some <laughs> of the more violent kids might be thinking uh, squash. And so that would be an example of a distance class. So you really are able to get to many different types for your curriculum needs. Author visit, and I actually offer kind of author visits with the students. They are able to see a working author, and then I do collaborative writing activities with the students so that we can create our own work. And I'll be actually giving an example of that later. Video conferencing programs can be more than one kind of format at the okay. same time. So for instance, this one, Troubled Waters, is two at the same time. Video conferencing brings the king to you. It has a royal aspect. That is plausible when content is king, right? Uh, and I think we can probably agree that content is king. And you can find countless programs on CILC. Uh, so for instance, here are a few of mine. And I actually offer over 30 different programs about writing and writing across the curriculums, as well as um, history, social studies. And so teachers are able to search by standards or by subject or grade level to find content that really matches their curriculum needs. You can choose winners. And I know this is a little big-headed, but I could not resist the urge to put my own picture in there. <laughs> and that's because I actually, for the second year in a row, I received the um, Content Provider Award for 2009. And another fun tool is that when you're on CILC, you can see the evaluation. And if you see the star and the thumbs up <laughs> sign with a lot of evaluations in it, you can yeah. know that a lot of other teachers have said, oh, this is good, this is useful for our classroom. And so that really allows you to go in there and see what is best for you. You can travel around the globe without leaving your classroom. So if you see, would you rather have all that hassle, or would you rather, yes, smiley face, use a video conferencing system. And for librarians, do we have any librarians here? Yay! Yes, okay, <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Uh, as a kid, I am still today, I'm still a kid, that's right, I forgot. Uh, I really love reading, and so I go to libraries, and I am going to read all kinds of different books, fiction, nonfiction, etc. But I know that a lot of other kids will be thinking, oh, reading is so boring, it's something we have to do in school, and, and it's really not fun. Well. I think that we can really fight that impression by linking required reading to worlds of information. So for instance, when your students are reading about the Hubble telescope, they're going to think, oh, it's the Born Hubble telescope, it's somewhere up in space, not important to us. Now, if you can actually maybe set up a connection to someone at NASA and they can tell you about the Hubble telescope, maybe show pictures and replicas and have a little virtual tour of that area, then kids will be thinking, oh, wow. So this is right here, this is really interesting. And so when you are able to link that required reading to sites around the world, then students will be thinking, oh, this is why I'm reading this. This is so interesting. And they will be able to. Uh, also, this is a good way for you to connect to many different types of learners. So for those who like reading, 
then you, then you have those who like reading, but then also you have those who like visuals. And so video conferencing offers that. Also auditory learners. And so you are really able to tie in reading with all kinds of learning styles through video conferencing. I'd like to talk about my presentation through video conferencing, what I do, a little bit about my programs. Um, thanks to Jan Zanidis today for her and the generosity of Tamburg, I actually have a video conferencing unit in my house, which is so cool. I love having technology in my house because I can just go downstairs and play with it whenever I want. Um, and it's funny, you will look in my room, you're not going to see so many toys. It's more, I'll have all kinds of technological gadgets. And I love to use them for education at the same time. So they actually have a good purpose. And I've been able to deliver 300 video conferencing presentations to both students and teachers over two years. I video conference pretty much every day during the school year, not during summer, obviously, and vacationing, and working a little. Video conferencing builds student interest, because raise your hand if you've ever had an experience where students are kind of drowsy in class or they're not really paying attention. 